Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord this morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, you creatures here below. The name of the Lord is worthy. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Amen. Praise be the name of Jesus. Lord, we honor you this morning. Lord, I worship your name this morning. Great and marvelous are you, O Lord God. Awesome in power. Mighty in praise. You are God and you are exalted. Hallelujah, hallelujah this morning. Bless the Lord this morning as I come on here. I want to talk to you about a scripture um, in the book of John. John chapter 11, and we're going to be talking about Lazarus this morning. Praise God. Praise God and show you through the scriptures we will look to see the hand of God in our lives. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm not sure what the Lord is going to say this morning. I have the Bible opened and I will read it with you. And God will speak. Praise the Lord. Before I do that, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. There's a song that I just want to sing this morning. The news came to Jesus. Please come fast. See, Lazarus is sick and without your help. He will not last. Mary and Martha watch their brother die. They waited for Jesus. He did not come. And they wondered why. The death watch was over, married for days. Then somebody said, he'll soon be here. The Lord's on his way. Martha ran to him, oh, and then she cried. Lord, if you had been here, you could have healed him. He'd still be alive. Oh, but you're four days late, and all hope is gone. And Lord, we don't understand why you waited so long but his way is God's way not yours or mine and isn't it great when you're four days late he is still on time. Now you may be wondering, oh, in your valley of fear, oh, you've tried everything, but everything seemed to fail. Oh, yes, but Jesus will show up in your valley of despair. And he'll cry out to your burdens. He'll speak to your grave. And he'll say, come forth, I'm here. Oh, when he's four days late. Hallelujah. And all hope is gone. Oh, you don't understand why you waited so long. But his way is 
God's way, not yours, not mine. And isn't it great when he's four days late, he's still on time. I want to let somebody know today, oh, when he's four days late, he is still on time. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. That is a beautiful song. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes Jesus doesn't always seem to show up when we want him, but he's always on time. Praise God. And I just wanted to sing that song as a prelude to what we will be talking about today in the book of John um, chapter 11. Praise be the name of Jesus. And I'm going to try my best to be timely. Sometimes I get excited and I start moving very fast and I stumble over my words. Praise God. But today I want to try my best to be timely because I really want to hear what the Lord is saying in the scripture today. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go into the word, okay? Let's just go into the word. Let's hear what the Spirit of God will say to us today from the word. I personally don't know what God is going to say just yet because I just opened the Bible to that this morning and I said, you know what? I'm going to speak on this thing because that song was in my spirit. Praise God. Amen. So we'll start. Now a certain man was sick. I always love the way the Bible just opens up with some dramatic statement, you know? <laughs> St. John chapter 11. Now a certain man was sick. And this man had a name. His name was Lazarus. He was of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. It came, sorry, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. So if you've read the scriptures about Mary who came and wiped the, the feet of Jesus with her hair, that was the same Mary who was the brother, um, the sister to Lazarus. Praise God. And so it says, therefore, his sisters sent unto him, unto Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou love, lovest is sick. So they knew that Jesus truly loved Lazarus. There was something special. I'm very hot in this thing here. You know what? Forgive me this day. Forgive us this day. We're trespasses, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. So Lazarus was um, a friend of God, a friend of Jesus, okay? So Jesus loved Lazarus. So when they realized that Lazarus was sick and Jesus was not around, they sent to call for him. You know what? If you have a situation and you know you have a good friend, you're probably going to call for your friend. You know you have somebody like Jesus who is a friend of yours, you're probably going to call for him. Well, let's see what happened. So when Jesus heard, so the message got to Jesus and Jesus heard, Jesus heard, Praise God that he um, that he see that when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son of man might be glorified thereby. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And uh, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick. He abode two days still in the same place where he was. So Jesus actually, Jesus actually um, didn't, praise God, there was an interruption, I apologize. So Jesus actually didn't get like all excited and decide to, you know, pack up everything from where he was and run over to his friend um, Lazarus. This is what we would have expected, right? We would expect that if you send for your friend, then your friend you know, who is going to show up. He's going to, she's, yo, your friend is sick. Come. But Jesus abode another two days where he was. And he wasn't, in, he wasn't in a hurry to get there. Praise God. Praise God. Then after that, he said to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. 
His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee. So they were just, the Jews are just trying to kill him and to stone him. And why are you going to be going over there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If any man walk in the day, that he stumbles not because he sees the light of his of this world. So Jesus is speaking to them in parable at this point, but he was really sending them a, a, mess, a message in parable. But he was literally saying, like, we're not going to go in the night. We're going in the day. So if anything happens, we're going to be able to see. And we're going to be able to, um, you know, to get get past that. But he was really speaking a prophetic message, a parable to them. Praise God. But he says, um, these things said he, and after that he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleeps. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. And they were thinking, what on earth? Your friend is sleeping and you want to travel two days to go and wake him up? Why would you want to do that? Isn't it a good thing that he's sleeping, Lord? Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be it Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. So then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So those who believe that probably Lazarus was not actually dead, Lazarus was dead. Jesus said he's dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. So it was been two days now since Jesus got the message. Jesus didn't get excited and start weeping and crying and telling everybody that, oh my God, Lazarus is sick. You know, because Jesus wasn't, he's not, he, he's not like us who, you know, sometimes our faith, our faith rather waver. And uh, we will hear a message like that. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, you know, this person is going to die or he's sick. What, what on earth was happening to him? Let us go, let us go before he passes away. But Jesus stu stu stayed around for like two days. And then he told his friends that his disciples, come on, let's go over and see Lazarus. We're going to go wake him up. But why are you going to wake him for? He's sleeping no, he's dead. <laughs> I'm going to go wake him up. He's dead. Praise God. So you guys know the story goes on. Praise God. Then said Thomas, Thomas, <laughs> which is called Didymus unto the fellow, the, unto his fellow disciples. Let us also go that we may die with him. So here comes doubtful Thomas saying, you know what? Let's go so that we will die. We're going to die with Jesus. If he's got, we know he's going to die when he goes over there because the Jews are looking for him. I mean, they're looking to stone him and he's going to go through to Judea. Let's just go so that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave. So Jesus came to Lazarus grave and he found that Lazarus has been buried for like four days already. Praise God. <laughs> Now Bethany was nigh, was, uh, nigh unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off, and many of the Jews came. So other people came because they heard that Jesus was coming into town. So some of them came to, um, to the house, praise God. Many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. So because they had this person that was dead, they're coming to say, oh, let's just, you know, go over, you know, nine night in Jamaica, they would call it nine, nine, ninth night or whatever. Or they come to, you know, say they're comforting you. In Jamaica, they come there to eat, to drink the rum and Praise God, my mic is gone. To drink the rum and to um and to <laughs> drink white rum and eat manish water and goat and you know all that nice stuff that they prepare at the funerals. But Jesus, you know, Jesus have a different mission. When somebody's dead, Jesus is not all excited because he's not worried because he's resurrection and he is life. Praise God. So he doesn't have to worry. Resurrection shows up and things get resurrected. Praise God. So I was, I'm just, just going to, you know, take my time with this. So Lazarus in the, in the very beginning, it says a certain man was sick. And I was thinking about that as I read it, it just came in my mind. A certain man was sick. And I realized that in that little phrase, a certain man that includes each and every one of us, that includes me. And that includes you. That includes every one of us. We are that certain man somebody who was born into this world, but we were sick. We were sick unto death. Praise God. Sick because of sin, but the wages of sin is death. So we had a death sentence. Hallelujah. Glory. I hear God speaking. We had a death sentence on our lives. Praise God. Sick unto death. Praise God. And 
Jesus, when he heard the message of that Lazarus was sick, he did not show up right away. He did not rush to come. And I thought about that as well. Like, why wouldn't Jesus rush to come? And then the Lord brought to my, my memory the scripture that says, but, um, it says the when the full in Galatians four and verse four to six the Bible says that when the fullness but when the fullness of time was come God sent forth His Son born of a virgin born under the law so that He might redeem us that are under the law those of us who are under the bondage and are had the sentence of death upon our lives Amen so Jesus ha ya 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 kotora Sunday I feel God y'all I feel God. God right now. Jesus did not rush in to run over to Lazarus. Just like when we were sick in sin, God didn't come, come immediately, but he says he's, he prepared someone, Jesus Christ, that he was going to send. And he sent him when the fullness of time was come. So in Lazarus' case, it was two days that Jesus waited before he started traveling. And it took him another two days to get there. So there was four days gap. But by the time he got there, Lazarus was already buried. Praise God. Jesus showed up for us. Praise God. And he was he took our place and he was crucified and he was buried. I want to thank God that even though he came when the fullness of time, the fullness of time in God's plan was enough, praise God, time. Because had he waited any longer, it would have been I who would have been dead and buried, praise God, praise God. But Jesus showed up on time, on time so that he can redeem those of us who were under the bondage of sin, praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so when Jesus showed up, you know, there were other people that had come by and they come and say they're comforting to comfort those that are, that are there. Praise God. Morning. Praise God. And we recognize that it doesn't matter who else show up. Nobody, nobody. I hear God speaking to me in this moment. I've never really looked at the scripture like that before, but nobody else, no matter who show up to comfort you, nobody can comfort you when it comes to that sickness and that death sentence of sin that was up on our lives. Nobody can show up to sustain us in that process. Nobody can comfort us and, bring, and, and, and to the place where they, they comfort us in our sin situation. Praise God. Jesus Christ is the only one. Everybody else was coming, but it was only when Jesus showed up for Lazarus that the resurrection happened. Praise God. I don't care who, which other God shows up. I don't care what you guys want to name any other God. The Bible says all other gods are fools. Praise God. And he says, there is none else beside me. There is no savior. That is Jesus Christ. When he shows up, that is when resurrection power kicks in. That is when resurrection life comes in. Praise God. Because he shows up with himself and he is the resurrection and he is the life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So although other people showed up at Lazarus's graveside, none of them had the power that it took to bring him back to life. Praise God. Only Jesus Christ, only Jesus Christ can save you from your sins, can redeem you from your mess. Only Jesus Christ can bring you out of your bondage of sin and bring you into his eternal life. Somebody praise the Lord with me this morning. Praise God. And so the scripture goes on to talk about how Jesus shows up. There's a, script, a part of it here where I read, so Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though ye were dead, yet shall ye live. All it takes is your faith in Jesus Christ for you to live. Praise God. Hallelujah. All it takes is your faith in Jesus Christ for you to live. And whosoever lives and believes. So not only do you believe and live, but when your life has come and when you start live, you don't turn back to the old way. You live and you continue to believe and whosoever liveth and believeth. I love this. I love this Lord. Thank you for opening my eyes right now, Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me 
He that believeth on me, though ye were dead, yet shall he live. So if those that are dead in sin believes in Jesus, they shall live, praise God. They shall come into eternal life, praise God, amen? But when you come into that, you cannot then turn back and go your own way and do anything you want. You gotta continue living and believing because it goes on to say, and whosoever lives after you've been resurrected and you live and then you continue to believe, praise God, in me, you shall never die, hallelujah. And then he asked the question, believest thou this? It is important that we believe what Jesus has said that we believe the word of God and she says unto him so she he was talking to Martha she says unto him yea Lord I believe that thou art the Christ the son of God which should come into the world praise God somebody need to confess that today somebody need to confess Lord I believe that you are the son of God that came into the world praise the name of Jesus praise the name of Jesus and praise God. So it says, now Jesus was not yet come unto the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. So Martha had gotten up. Um, at one point, Martha got up and Martha began to, she heard that Jesus was on his way. So she didn't wait for him to get there. She says, I'm going to meet him part of the way. So she got up and she started going to Jesus. Somebody need to rise up and come to Jesus right now. You are hearing this word. You have heard many words that is calling you to the kingdom, that is calling you to life. You need to take on that spirit of Martha right now and to say, I am going to rise up and come to Jesus. Jesus is coming to you, but you need to meet him part way. You need to get up. You need to get up, pull yourself up, take yourself up and say, I am coming Lord to thee. Hallelujah. I am coming Lord to thee. And you need to come to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Martha rose up and Martha went to Jesus. Now listen to this. Some of the crowd, when they saw that Martha rose up and was going to Jesus, they start to follow Martha because they said, oh, she's going to the graveside so that she can um, go and weep. There she's going to the graveside. Sometimes, brethren, when you rise, when you rise to come to Jesus and to follow Jesus, there's going to be folks that will not understand. They will not get it. They will not understand what has, what is this change? Hello, Bokotaya. What is this change that has come over you all of a sudden? All of a sudden you were in a situation where you were weeping and mourning and now you have gotten up and you're moving forward in your life. You're going to Christ and you're going after God. And so they're saying, what on earth has happened to her? What is the change? So maybe she's going, they, they're going to start to come up with different ideas and they want to talk things that is negative. Praise God. Oh, she's going to the grave to weep. But Martha had a different, a different mission in mind. Praise God. She knows that she needed to go to Jesus. And so it says here that the Jews then which were with her in the house and cometh for um, comforted her when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily, hmm, hastily, somebody need to start getting up hastily. I need to go to Jesus. Praise God. Get up hastily. It is no time to waste right now. Praise God, because the coming of the Lord is nigh. And if we're wasting time, we will be found in a situation where he is here and we are found wanting. We are lost. Praise God. Hastily, she rose up and she decided that she's going to go to Jesus. And so they said, oh, they're going to follow her. They're following her. But why are you following me? Are you following me because you want to see Jesus? Are you following me because you have some other plan in my, you thought maybe I'm going to mourn. You're looking for my life to go down. You're following to see me go down. You're following to see if I'm going to crumble. Praise God. Hallelujah. But somebody need to follow to see Jesus. Somebody need to follow to see Jesus, praise God. And it doesn't matter why people are coming after you or following you. Just know that somewhere along the line, if you continue to your point to get in contact with Jesus, you will bring somebody along with you. As we follow Christ, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So as you are moving forward to go to Jesus and to get closer to Jesus, your life is attracting folks. They are looking at you and they're wondering what is changed what is going on with her oh they don't understand it and so whatever they come up with don't make sense but they will follow you until you come in contact with Christ and they also will come in contact with Christ because your life will be a living testimony praise God 
Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord speaking right now. And he says, then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. So she, she just fell before him in worship and she fell before him in her brokenness. She fell before him in her weakness. She fell before him. And she just said, Lord, Lord, she poured out the, the, the weight that was in her spirit. She poured it out before for him praise God and she says Lord if you had been here my brother had not died praise God when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her it touches hard and so Jesus groaned in his spirit and he was troubled and he said where have you laid him where have you laid him sometimes beloved ones when I mean we don't understand how much God is touched with our feelings of infirmities sometimes we don't realize how much it burns his heart when he realizes that we're we we don't even understand what he's trying to do in our lives. When we are going through where things are dying around us and we begin to crumble under the pressure and not knowing that Jesus, our life, Jesus, our resurrection, praise God, is he, he, is, he is with us and he is coming to, towards us and he is going to make things right. He is going to show up on time when the fullness of time, he's going to show up in your situation and he is going to resurrect your situation praise be the name of Jesus but I'm so thankful that Martha knew or Mary rather knew where to go she knew where to go praise God that she needed to get to the feet of Jesus praise God and he says, and when, and, and, uh, and said, he says, where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus just wept because his heart was so, was so touched by the fact that they didn't, they didn't realize that he, even though he was not there in that moment, that he was the resurrection and the life. Then he said, he said, then said the Jews, behold, how much he loved him. Jesus loves us, beloved ones. Jesus love you. Jesus loves us. God loves us so much much praise God some of them said could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not die they're saying well if God loves him so much how is it that he allowed him to die how is it that he he's been opening blind eyes he's been doing all these great things and this is his friend Sometimes people look at God like that in your life and say, wait, wait a minute. She's been talking Jesus, Jesus all this time and look what's happening in her life. And how come God is not opening, um, is not resurrecting things in her life? How come God is, is blessing me over here and blessing this one over here? and doing, How come God is not doing all this? Why is it that God? And so they want to bring um, reproach against your God. They want to bring reproach against the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. But I want to let you know that Jesus is in your midst that Jesus is in your midst he has showed up in your situation and Jesus therefore again he groaned in himself cometh to the grave and it was a cave praise God and a stone was laid upon it praise God the grave was like a cave it had a stone laid upon it this man was barricaded in dead buried praise God Folks trying to barricade him in, keeping, keep him dead. Praise God. Do you realize that sometimes, praise God, people look at you and people say, this one is dead. And so they want to literally find a way to keep you dead. They barricade you in. They put a cave, put you in a cave and they put a stone there. Wrap you up real good. Praise God. Praise God. But here Jesus, Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Sometimes the reason why it looks like some people's life is going nowhere is because we have put stones in their way. We have blocked them, praise God. We have blocked them and we have we have sealed them in so that they cannot even find their way into life. Jesus says, you, you take away the stone. You put it there. Take it away. What stone have we put in front of people? What stones have we caused to barricade some folks in? Praise God. And then we are expecting them to rise. We're expecting them to live. We're expecting them to grow and to prosper. But it is us, our mouths sometimes. We use words that barricade people in and block them in. Praise God. And they cannot live because of us. We have put stone